Is there something lurking in the dark outer reaches of the solar system? For centuries, people have been speculating on the possibility of an unseen planet, the so-called Planet X or Planet 9. And it looks like now we might just have found it. Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou, and in this week, my first ever book will be published. This is a children's book on planets. So in this week's video, I'll be talking about the idea of Planet X. William Herschel discovered Uranus in 1781. This was the first planet discovered with a telescope. And its discovery essentially doubled the known size of the solar system at that time. After Uranus was discovered, astronomers began to meticulously observe its movements and calculate its orbit based on Newton's laws of gravity. They took into account the gravitational tugs from all the known planets, but mostly it was from Jupiter and Saturn. The orbit of Uranus was published in the early 1800s, but over the decades that followed, especially into the early mid-1800s, careful observations showed that Uranus was not precisely following its predicted orbital path. There were irregularities or perturbations in its orbit. It was sometimes slightly ahead of where it should be and sometimes slightly behind. Now, assuming that Newton's laws were correct, the only logical explanation was that the gravitational pull of another as yet undiscovered planet, even further out from the sun, exists. And it turns out that using this math, you can calculate exactly where this undiscovered planet is. And in 1846, Neptune was discovered exactly where the mathematicians had predicted it to be. Now, after Neptune was found, astronomers continued to refine their understanding of our outer solar system. Percival Lowell, a wealthy American astronomer and founder of the Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona, became convinced in the early 20th century that there were still some unexplained discrepancies in the orbits of both Uranus and Neptune. He believed that these remaining slight irregularities pointed to the existence of a ninth major planet which he famously called Planet X. He meticulously calculated possible positions for this planet and initiated extensive photographic searches for it in his observatory. His persistent search ultimately led to the discovery of Pluto in 1930 by an astronomer working at the Lowell Observatory. But it turns out that Pluto's mass was far too small to cause the gravitational perturbations that Lowell had observed or thought he had observed. So essentially, he spent his entire life dedicated to searching for these, this planet X. And of course, we have no extra planets right now, so he came out empty-handed. Now, later it was determined that these slight inaccuracies in the estimated masses of Uranus and Neptune, combined with improved observations, largely would resolve away these original discrepancies. That there wasn't a pull after all. So the original theory of a planet X to explain away those irregularities seen in Uranus and Neptune was disproven. So even though essentially Lovell found the planet Pluto, it wasn't really the planet X that he was looking for. And we know since then Pluto has been demoted to a dwarf planet by the International Astronomical Union, the IAU, in 2006. This is because it hasn't cleared its neighborhood around its orbit. Its orbit is still shared by many other objects in the Kuiper Belt. And it's not the only dwarf planet in our solar system either. The others being Ceres, Orcus, Haumea, Kaur, Makemake, Gonggong, Eris and Sedna. Eris is even more massive than Pluto. Besides Ceres, all of these dwarf planets are trans-Neptunian objects, TNOs. Their orbits lie beyond that of Neptune. Now, even though Lovell's perceived discrepancies in Uranus or Neptune orbits turned out to be wrong, in more recent years, the idea of Planet 9 or Planet X has gained interest again due to some completely new observational evidence. When Sedna was discovered, its extreme orbit raised questions on how it can possibly exist. Sedna's orbit is so incredibly eccentric, it's highly elongated, that it takes 12,000 years just to make an orbit. Orbit. So if Sedna formed closer to the Sun, how is it possible that it got flung out so far? 
Its furthest distance is way far too out that it's not possible for the known giant planets Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus or Neptune to have scattered it there. In 2016, astronomers noticed some extreme trans-Neptunian objects, ETNOs, that included the dwarf planet Sedna and that they appeared to cluster in a similar direction. Their orbits are also very elliptical and their orbital planes had similarities in tilting relative to the main plane of the solar system. Now, the chances of this happening is incredibly low. So this is where the Planet Nine hypothesis comes in. If Planet Nine exists, its distant but powerful gravitational tug could have pushed Sedna into this highly elongated orbit. And Planet Nine's gravity could also explain why Sedna's perihelion is so far away from the sun, preventing it from getting too close and interacting with the other giant planets. It would also explain the clustering of all of these ETNOs. To do this, Planet Nine must have an anti-aligned orbit. This means that when the ETNOs are at their closest point to the Sun, Planet Nine would be at its furthest point from the Sun and vice versa. In this configuration, Planet Nine can then gravitationally shepherd and stabilize these distant objects into their observed clustered patterns. And this prevents them from being ejected out or colliding with Planet Nine itself. Now, there's also the Kuiper Cliff. So beyond Neptune is the Kuiper Belt, which contains many asteroids and icy bodies. You might expect that the number of these objects gradually decrease the further out you go but it just doesn't. At about 50 AU, so about 50 times the Earth's in distance, the number of Kuiper Belt objects just drops off. Again, this could be the hypothesized Planet Nine shepherding or scooping up all those small objects with its gravitational pull. Now, loads of independent calculations seem to agree that Planet Nine exists. And if it really does exist, then it should be a super Earth or a mini Neptune. So essentially five to 10 times Earth's mass, making it big enough to be detectable. But there's a problem and that's in its highly eccentric orbit. It's really, really far out and it has a semi-major axis of between 400 and 1,500 AU. So 400 to 1,500 times Earth's sun's distance. To put that into perspective, Pluto orbits at about 50 AU. If Planet Nine exists, it's going to be incredibly faint and very slow moving on the sky. But here's where the plot thickens. The universe loves to throw us curveballs. Recently, a dwarf planet was discovered, 2017 OF201, and it presents a significant challenge to this neat hypothesis of Planet X. Its orbit simply doesn't fit the predicted cluster of TNOs that we saw. So if Planet Nine truly exists and it's influencing these TNO objects, why hasn't it affected 2017 OF201? Its gravity should have destabilized its orbit. One possibility is, of course, that this dwarf planet might have only just recently entered its particular orbital configuration, and Planet Nine simply hasn't had enough time to exert its gravitational influence yet. Now, for the really, really recent news that just broke this month, a group of astronomers has claimed to identify a compelling candidate for Planet Nine in archival infrared data. Some of this data dates all the way back to 1983. So they've seen this slowly moving dot that could be our elusive Planet X. Interestingly, this candidate appears to be as large as Neptune though, so much larger than the super Earth size that was initially predicted. But this isn't the first time that a Planet Nine candidate has been flagged in infrared data, so these findings are still unconfirmed. It's crucial now for follow-up observations to track its full orbit and confirm if this dot is indeed the real deal. But either way, the future of Planet Nine hunt looks incredibly bright, especially with Vera Rubin Observatory now officially up and running. This groundbreaking optical telescope is designed to scan almost the entire southern sky every three nights. This is an unparalleled survey. Its capabilities means that if Planet Nine does exist, then it's highly likely that we'll discover it within the next year or two. We are truly on the verge of potentially rewriting our solar system map.
Now, this is actually bad news for me because my Planet book might need an update. My book goes live on the 6th of June and I'll put a link down below as soon as it becomes available. But if you've joined my Perks memberships, then I'll be doing a live reading of it with a Q&A. So you'll have that to look forward to too. Anyway, that's all I have time for this week. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.